Hi guys, so uh, today I'm driving my S Max, and uh, it's been a year since since uh, since I had this car. So what led me to buy this car to recap a bit, right? Um, it all started when my wife was pregnant with our second child, and um, yep, and we needed to upsize to something that would accommodate two adults, oh, sorry, three adults, and two child seats. So we looked at various options. I, I at various points considered the Mazda Five, the Volkswagen Charan. Uh, even the BMW 2 Series Grand Tourer but uh, at the end I looked at sheer bang for buck initially I was looking at the first gen S Max okay that one was about 35 40,000 at that time in terms of used car value and even if I factored in I, I thought I factored in the problematic dual clutch transmission and the, the electro hydraulic steering rack these are the two weak points of the car all right. Uh, even though I, I budget, even if I budget the need to fix those two items, I'm st I was still looking at the buy plus fix cost of at most fifty thousand, fifty five thousand ringgit, which is still cheaper than buying a brand new Alza. So I was looking at that, uh, but my wife asked me to look at something newer. So I gave my friends at Sime W Auto Connection a call and asked them, hey, do you have any more units of the second generation S Max for sale? And they so happened to have this demo unit from the Juru branch waiting to be defleeted. And they asked me if I'm interested to take it up. And the price they offered to me was below a hundred thousand ringgit. So I so I was looking at it. You know, wow, that's double my budget, but the the value proposition was was mind blowing because this car, brand new, was two hundred forty thousand ringgit. So weighing it right, I mean, even if money was not a consideration, first gen S Max, second gen S Max, the first gen what would have been a sportier drive, all right? That the first gen handles better, it's more agile, more nimble. But it is also more problematic because of its issues, of the issues it faced with the, the transmission and the steering rack. This one, um, well, it's heavier, it's more cumbersome, uh, but it still has the, the powerful EcoBoost engine. It's still overall, right, um, a good handling car, a good, you know, good dynamic fundamentals, just not as outright sporty as the first gen one. So, is a, it is a better MPV. This is a better MPV, even though the first gen was a nicer, was the sportier car to drive. All right, and after all, I am buying this for family considerations. So I decided, okay, fine. All things equal, the second gen is the wiser choice. And to be frank, um, even though it's softer and slower than the first gen, this car still handles and drives pretty well in isolation. Certainly better than a lot of other similar, similarly sized vehicles out there. I mean, as an MPV, I think it really, really has no contest out there. All right, I think I don't think there are many um, seven-seater vehicles out there that drive and handle as well as this right until re the recently launched uh, Volkswagen Tiguan R-Line 2.0 but you see the thing is that you may ask me why do you need performance or, or handling when you're talking about an MPV let me tell you this when you are driving with your family 
and you're just you're just cruising along right and suddenly an obstacle appears you need to make an emergency maneuver to sway out of the way of that obstacle would you rather do it with an MPV that has you know solid dynamic fundamentals all right that is able to steer its way around the obstacle without worrying that you know it may topple over all right um, yeah and also because you will be traveling you know with a full load of passengers and cargo often you want something that would ply the highways without the engine struggling and and yeah and and that's and that what what draws me to the S Max it, it may be an unconventional choice where MPVs are concerned but you know in terms of ticking the boxes it, this this thing ticks all the right boxes for me okay so um how is the last one year like with this car i would say i'm very happy with it um every time when i drive this thing you know bring my fa my, my my family back to my wife's hometown in malacca on the highways uh driving this car it's it's a breeze because the engine gives good performance so I'm able to cruise along the highway effortlessly and also it feels sure-footed it feels planted on the highway so I don't have to work I, I don't worry about you know wallowing swaying all that it is able to it gives me that sense of confidence when I'm when I'm carrying my family and that feeling is important pros and cons of, of this I love the ventilated seats. I love the massage seats. I think this is easily amongst the best massage seats in the business. It was only recently when I reviewed the Bentega that I finally came and experienced a massage seat that could rival the ones here. Um, well, also, a pre also, I've also come to, to really... Uh, I've also come to appreciate. So now I've also come to gotten used to using voice command, and this is something that I that I nowadays use very often. So sometimes during daytime uh, on a working day, what what I often do is I use the voice command function. I'll say I'll press this out, and I'll call Bobby, call Fan, call Bing. All right, I use that time uh, and, and the class Bluetooth to to call my call up call my colleagues and whatnot to catch up on work related matters you know it's because it's so convenient i just press the voice command button here no hey proton no hey s max but you know just press the button call and say hey bobby ah, i don't do this catch up catch up hey fan ah, no, no. so that that li it's a little thing but it's something that that i would say uh has positively impacted <laughs> my daily use of this car now one thing i don't appreciate with this car is the transmission now it's it's a mixed feeling thing like really okay i appreciate that it's not the problematic power shift dual clutch transmission but at the same time the calibration work on this transmission is really poor okay uh so much so that i think my e39 despite being the better part of two decades old has a smarter shifting gearbox than this this six-speed gearbox yes it's smooth shifting but like all torque converter transmission is but it is also um the shifting logic is it often leaves the car stranded off boost it often leaves the engine stranded off boost and so many a time when you want to drive at hard throttle you want to drive gently the, the transmission upshifts so quickly that you end up lugging the engine you know it, it's just like pulling down a thousand five two thousand rpm but it is struggling to pull yeah and as a result most of the time i have to drive this thing in sport mode so that it does not upshift too quickly and it allows me to maintain gentle pressure on the throttle but without 
lug that that feeling of lugging the engine and you know when you drive a, when you have a turbo engine you especially do not want to have that lugging feeling yeah so um <clears throat> i think and this is something that that i think can be improved with this car Okay guys, so uh, now just to bring you guys on the walk around to show you this car, what's, how's this car been like, features of this car that I've come to use, to like, to dislike over one year with it. So we start from the front, headlights, these are LED, full LED headlights, adaptive high beam assist. So uh, they've been very useful. I, a few times I was driving in absolute darkness on, on the highways, right, on unlit sections of the highway. Um, the active high beam assist proved quite capable in detecting the presence of oncoming vehicles and adjusting the beam throw to avoid them. So when you're driving, right, you can actually see the beam, the, the, the throw of the beam okay all right go, throwing far ahead and then when there's a car in front of that it the the shape of the throw actually surrounds the car so you know it, uh, to avoid i hope it avoids glaring the other drivers lah okay so uh just send this car for a wash recently otherwise the front wheels really would have been covered with brick dust okay um large windscreen you know the insured my <laughs> Uh, my, my insured value of this windscreen is about what five or six thousand ringgit and it's not cheap because also it has to it does this car does not have auto braking but they do have the sensor there for the rain sensor as well as for the headlight sensors uh yeah so you've got keyless entry on all four doors touch type keyless entry front and rear door so you touch this to un to lock and then you put your palms here to unlock all right uh, now we come to the back so as I as I showed during MCO time uh, we got into an unfortunate incident with a concrete peeler uh, that has been fixed but uh, I think the body shop didn't do a good job in aligning this tail light with here so i'm going to have this rectified at the next service the funny thing is this reflector this utterly well no function reflector costs 600 bucks to replace so i decided to leave it but the tail light cost about 2000 ringgit thereabouts which is to which i felt was surprisingly cheap and uh the good thing is that they sell this piece and this piece separately okay otherwise otherwise it would have been it would have cost me a bit more so uh, here's the opening of the tailgate now one thing that I learned after buying this car because I like to reverse park my car at home right so uh, with my with my Waja E39 I will reverse all the way back you know within a cup within a few inches of the wall but with this one I have to leave that about two three two and a half to three feet of space so that it doesn't impede the opening of the tailgate so you see here are uh, as you can see the the rear the, the third row seats have been rarely used i think used at most three four times but we do appreciate the cargo room here okay so inside here there's this hook and uh so this i have this rather long stroller and uh, thankful that the seats, the, the, the mirror row seats are individually adjustable. So that seat where my sister-in-law typically sits, it's pushed furthest forward so that it just takes the stroller in this, in this uh, loading position. Okay, um, so we've got a tonneau cover here, right, that, uh, that you can pull to cover the contents of the boot now one thing that uh that this tonic car was poorly designed two things actually so you see right first thing to retract the tonic cover okay it catches the seat belt that's but that's small that's a small small factor 
The, the other thing is, when you remove the tonneau cover, there's nowhere to keep it, all right? There's no place to keep the tonneau cover. So lighting, okay? Uh, this is very thoughtful, okay? So there's a top lighting here when you open the tailgate, shines down. But this one, um, you know, when you open this in, in darkness, right? This light here, because of its angle, it's actually glaring at night. So, uh, so there were times where I actually tried to stick a piece of you know plastic or cardboard here to to sort of like focus the light downwards, but it always comes out. So never bother with that. Uh, this is nifty. So at the press of a button, the seats can come down. So let me demonstrate with that. One touch and let me pull this down as well. I like that it comes down flat. So that's good. All right, very, very useful in carrying big items. In fact, when I was shifting houses, what, back in 2016, I actually borrowed another S-Max from Ford. Before I bought this one, I borrowed another S-Max from Ford. To, to, and we took that car to Ikea to buy, to, to, to buy all our furniture. And after once we're done, you know, loading all the things in the car, right? My wife and I, we enjoyed a good massage from, this, from the front seats on the way home. Then you then this is a 12 volt socket. You may ask what's this what's this connected to, right? I'll show you guys later. Okay. Uh but yeah, here we have it. This is the uh the boot space of the S Max. Let me just bring you inside. So this is the reason why we bought the S Max. Okay. Three individual seats in the middle row, each of it with ISOFIX, but this is belt installed lah. So that's for my elder daughter. This is for my younger one. And uh, and there's still more than enough space here to fit an adult. So you see right now I come in here. I'm five foot seven. So this has a uh, well, an, uh, recline adjustment. Okay, uh, full recline. I've got good headroom. And uh, leg room is fantastic. Thigh support is surprisingly decent for uh, even the flexibility of the seats. But to be frank, the Persona seats actually gave better thigh support. And I have to say this, and I, I don't say this often enough, but I have to say this. The Persona actually has very, very good seat design. The rear seats have fantastic thigh support. Um, and fantastic lean angle. I remember I was seated at the back of the Persona during the one tank challenge when my wife was driving. Great. Uh, I, I felt it, it felt great at the back of this of, of the car. Okay. Um, yeah. So you've got rear air con vents here. You've got a 12 volt socket here, which we haven't used. But now we come to a weakness of this car. So this is where my second daughter sits. sits all right. And uh, my second daughter sweats easily and that brings me to the first issue with this car the lack of roof mounted ventilation the only rear air con vent is this one and always when i when i take her out even though in in, in an average day even with this kind of weather even in this kind of weather should be all sweating so uh what we have done is we've got this little fan here we patch this onto, onto the headrest so it gives her a bit more ventilation, makes her feel more comfortable uh, uh, when we go out. Okay, so you see here, this one has an ISOFIX mount as well, but we use a uh, belt installation. So um, before I, I go on with the walk around, the other day, right, at the Mercedes GLB launch, all right, uh, I was in conversation with a few people. So G the Mercedes GLB has four ISOFIX mounts, which is, as a parent, I saw that, wow, that's good. But a bachelor friend of, of us asked, why do you need so many isofix mounts? You see, the thing is, it's not about having, it's not about, you wouldn't, there are, it's unlikely a family would use all the isofix mounts. But the good thing is you have a choice. Depending on whatever usage uh, that you subject your car to, you have a choice in deciding where you want to put your, your you, where you want to mount your child seats so with the s max here i have a choice i can mount the two of them one side 
I can mount one on each outer side or if I have one I can mount them mount one in the center you have a choice okay so that's a good thing all right it, it gives you that practical practicality and flexibility in using the car so uh, come here to the front now the front seats fantastic front seats I love the seats here massage function ventilation function brilliant okay uh, so start stop engine now one thing that this car does lack inside is well a hook a data rig hook so uh, well this is my wife's solution just stamp out this on the on the glove box all right uh, so you see here is the gear shift lever electronic parking brake but surprisingly there is no hum hole assist so uh, this is the electric the, the digital instrument cluster it's a full digital cluster but in terms of uh, usability right in terms of the uh, the, the, the way it lays information out, I actually much prefer the one that they used in the Focus and the Kuga, where the, the, the center display actually has a four quadrant setup, all right, where, and, and it shows all the relevant driving data. So you see right now, I have uh, range to empty. I have average fuel consumption. I have trip meter, but I don't have a screen that allows me to see instantaneous and and uh, average consumption at the same time together with with the trip meter readout okay um small thing perhaps so uh, i've got a touch screen here it's a decent touch screen now the touch screen has a four quadrant la four quadrant layout so you have in entertainment here the heated seats here all right the uh the blue the, the phone bluetooth here and this is the navigation quadrant so uh it's nice simple and clear way to uh to maximize the the display so in terms of storage space you have this this top compartment here you've got this section here where i use this is where usually i drop my phone sometime if i need to use waste i will just put the phone like this okay uh here you've got two cup holders and uh, i like this two layered center console box inside here there's another tray rubberized so things don't slide about and here there is this other compartment here as well which i last time used to put my smart tag here but i stopped doing so because there was a time one time when i put the smart tag here the smart tag got stuck cannot pull out so we stopped using this drawer uh smart tech goes here as a process now this is one more thing that i appreciate the car this mirror here allows me to keep an eye on my on my two kids at the back um yeah without without having to turn my head around this is very good this was there from the previous gen s max as well sunglass holder never use it so overall a year with this car uh it's been mostly great my only complaint is that it lacks a reverse camera that to me is my biggest issue with this car but other things are all you know small matters like you know the transmission shifting and it's a very very small thing fuel consumption is on the heavy side this thing is thirstier than my e39 uh, but but once again small thing because you know if this because given the performance and the weight of this car a uh, heavy fuel consumption to me is a relatively small price to pay that being said um, wouldn't have minded if this car had come with a diesel engine instead that would have been lovely uh, that you still get that pull but with far better fuel consumption but overall very happy with this and uh, if I were to turn back the clock and revisit this, this, this decision I'd still buy this car no question